afternoon, good evening, whenever you're tuning in, welcome. My name is Kelly Knox, and we are the Appreciative Recovery Show. This is our very first show, so welcome, and thank you for joining us. So here at Appreciative Recovery, we believe that curiosity, self-compassion, and connection are the fundamental foundations to creating a fulfilling, peaceful, and balanced life. We all get stuck sometimes and need to be reminded of what keeps us calm when, when life overwhelms us. That's really what appreciative recovery aims to do. From simple frustrations to complex uh, emotional experiences, curiosity, self-compassion, and connection can lead us through the most painful of situations. So simply put, curiosity, self-compassion, and connection transforms us to a place of thriving. Um, so the show Appreciative Recovery will be conversations with experts who will help us build these fundamental foundations and with others who will take us into worlds beyond them. I hope you will join us each week as we explore ways to lead a life filled with joy and peace. Today's topic is self-compassion, and our guest today is Jennifer Carey. She is a therapist based out of Salem, who uses self-compassion as a basis of her practice. So welcome, Jennifer. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, I appreciate you joining us. So um, tell our uh, listeners a little bit about who you are and how you came to this kind of work. Yes. So um, again, my name is Jennifer, and I'm a licensed mental health counselor uh, in Salem. I have a private practice there. And very excited to be on this show because I love talking about self-compassion. I love practicing it personally and professionally. And uh, I guess the story kind of begins, you know, growing up, I was raised Irish Catholic and so taught a lot about being compassionate towards others. Um, you know, the every, you know, love thy neighbor, whole thing, you know, was very considerate of others, had that practice down pat. Uh, then, as I got older um, and started to explore some other studies and go through my own personal challenges, I started to read about this concept of being compassionate towards myself, and it just seemed like mind-blowing to put that on myself. I think we're really used to being compassionate towards others. Uh, it's easier for us to be compassionate towards others and you know, to be there for a friend or a family member, but to do that for ourselves is something different. So in my earlier uh, mid, actually maybe more mid to late 20s, I was going through some painful experiences with relationships and reached out to a couple of books. And there was one book, uh, Mastery of Love by Don Miguel Ruiz, mm -hmm. that actually started to talk about how we're, we're kind of born with this ability to be loving towards ourselves and even compassionate or forgiving if we make mistakes. But we lose it as we get older, uh, whether it's parents saying things or society. So that book kind of opened my mind to it. And then uh, Pema Chodron, I hope I'm saying her name right. <laughs> I was checking the pronunciation, but uh, Pema Chodron has a Pema Chodron, yeah. <laughs> has um, the book uh, When Things Fall Apart. And in that, she really talks about uh, instead of being hard on ourselves when we're feeling you know, painful experiences or, or having difficult experiences, we can be extra hard on ourselves and, and be critical of ourselves. And instead, why don't we be more accepting towards ourselves, give ourselves love and compassion? And that, again, was very mind-opening. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. right. So why do you think that um, folks so easily, when, when they talk about compassion, they can talk easily about compassion for other people, or even compassion for animals. But when you turn it to self-compassion, there's almost like this standoffish, like, oh no. Mm -hmm. I, I, it, it seems like it, maybe it's a New England thing, although I, that's probably not true. You know, the stoic New England. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing wrong. Um, <laughs> right. I think there's a lot of layers to it. Uh, there could be the selfish layer, like don't think about yourself. Uh, I think the self-critic, which is the opposite of self-compassion, when you think about it, the you know t you know being really hard on yourself, is is really ingrained in us. It's so there's maybe even a fear. Well, what would it be like if I was actually nice to myself? Because a lot of us believe, whether it's consciously or subconsciously 
that being hard on ourselves actually makes us better. Mm -hmm. But we're learning that it actually is making things worse because we're hard on ourselves. We're the hardest on ourselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we're not feeling so great, we're just making it worse by being hard on ourselves. Yeah, and if, if we're hard on ourselves, I find when I'm hard on myself, it's more difficult to make changes. Absolutely, because yeah. you're, you know, you've already failed, and now you're almost kicking yourself right, while you're right. down. So you're kicking yourself for whatever it is that you want to change, and you're not being able to change it, and that's just making it worse, it seems. Exactly, right? exactly, yeah. and yeah. and we have a lot of stories in our head. You know, there's a lot of things that we tell ourselves, and something that I often do with clients as well as personally, because I'm human too, uh, is help them become more mindful of what these stories are. Because a lot of times they're not true, but we, we have them whether we're not good enough, um, we're a failure, whatever it is. And those play over and over, yeah. you know, in our heads. And we, we interpret every experience to fit that story. Right, right, right. You made me think of um, curiosity. So mindfulness when, when I think about mindfulness for myself, sometimes I just think, okay, get curious about this. Mm -hmm. And so curiosity can help us lead to a little bit of um, self-compassion. Absolutely. Because yeah. when I hear you say curious, I think of instead of looking at ourselves with this judgment, it's just kind of, let me check this out. Why, why do I think this way? Why do I feel this way? And exploring what it is rather than being like, oh, I'm so bad that I think this. And you start judging the judging. And right, right, right. All that. It becomes yeah. very stupid. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Which defeats the whole idea right, that right. we're all human. <laughs> we're right. all trying to survive. We right. all want to love and be loved. We're all kind of in this together. And, um, you know, we all make mistakes. Yeah. We're all perfectly imperfect. All those things that right, are so right, true. Right. I think sometimes, too, coming to a, a soft place for ourselves you have to kind of go through a little bit of um, pain to get there, no? You're exactly right. And usually this, this, the stuff that we're saying to be compassionate to ourselves are, about are the things that we usually push away or try to escape. or So to bring light to it, it's very intense at first because mm -hmm. we've been ignoring it and shoving it away for so long. But mm -hmm. Do you think that that might be one of the adverse reasons or that people don't go there? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely, yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. Yeah, so there's a, a lot of talk about um, self-love, too, mm -hmm. you know, when, when you start thinking. How is self-love different from self-compassion? It's, yeah. Talk, yeah, talk good, a about good that. question. You know, it makes me think also about self-acceptance. Right. And they kind of all go together when you think about it. And it's all, it's the idea, the more love you can give yourself, the more love you can give others, right? The more you can accept yourself, the more you can accept others. And I think it's similar with compassion. The more compassion you can give yourself, you can give more compassion to others, even though we do it to others so easily, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to, it, I guess, they, there's, they overlap so much, it's hard to tell the difference, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I guess with self-love, uh, you know, you kind of associate it with this, you know, I'm okay, feeling right like I'm not so bad and self-esteem and things like that mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. acceptance is the idea you know there's some good parts to me some not so good parts but it's all good yeah. right and then the compassion I guess if we think about compassion in the face of suffering that's usually when we exercise compassion so that right. could be the the distinguishing right, factor right. is that with compassion it's usually in light of suffering some somebody's hurt so we feel compassion for them. But now self-compassion is doing that to yourself. So when we're, we're suffering ourselves, whether it's whether we fell in, and hurt our knee, physical suffering, or whether there's some um, internal pain Absolutely. happening. Yeah. Right? So it's having compassion for that. Exactly. So, um, yeah. So if we have uh, people watching who've made it this far, you know, and they're thinking, <laughs> oh, <laughs> self, oh, this is just too much for me. Click. Click. Don't click. Um, how, what, do you, what do you say to people like that? Oh, very good question. And I think I think it, it, it really varies individual to individual, kind of what the obstacles are and what the barriers are. Um, but if, it, if someone's watching and they are feeling a lot of emotional suffering, or for themselves, you know, there's something going on in their lives and they're feeling a lot of intense emotions. I say, listen, 
a little bit longer because and, and, try, and try to try to practice some of the things that we say because it does reduce suffering mm -hmm. to, to practice this. Uh -huh. It's proven time and time again. And I guess just thinking about, you know, when someone was really hard on you, so somebody outside of you was very critical and judging, um, did that help you versus when someone was encouraging and kind? Mm -hmm. And if, if you can kind of distinguish it that way, then, okay, now we're asking, can you do that for yourself? Right, right, right. And, and that's a beautiful thing, and I don't know why people run away from that. I know I, one, 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 uh, a little short story about how I came to, to you mm -hmm. is um, I posted in Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm looking for either a therapist or, a, or an academic mm -hmm. who, who deals with self-compassion to talk to on this show. And a couple people who I would expect liked the post, you know, and, but I received, I think it was four um, private messages and two phone calls, okay. as opposed to anybody posting on the site. It was almost as if they were saying, I'm not going to go public with this, but I'm really interested in this. Mm -hmm. And even the one woman that I spoke to, she goes, you know, my daughter was talking to me about this the other day, and I just, I just can't wrap my head around the self-compassion thing, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. it's just, it, it's like shameful. Like, how is self-compassion shameful? Mm -hmm. I find that fascinating. I know it is because it actually, you know, the inner critic kind of feeds the shame, whereas self-compassion actually mm -hmm. is resilience towards shame. Right, but, right. you know, there is this woo-woo element to it. People, I think, think this is kind of like that new age, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, component. Again, our society is so used to the just being really hard. Um, you know, you, yeah. you, you build someone up by breaking them down. Right. And I think we really are in the habit of, of leaning towards that. So this is something different. It, it really is. It is a shift. It, it is, is a, a shift. huge shift. It's a huge shift. So um, in preparation for this, I read the book by Kristen Neff, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's simply titled Self-Compassion. Yep. It's a great book. One of the things she um, talks about in there, which I found really mind-shifting, heart-shifting, was um, self-esteem mm -hmm. versus self-compassion and, and where the two lead us. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I know. I've read the book as well, so I'm trying to, t to grab some of her language around it. Um, it is different, you know, and I think I'm glad that you brought it up because I think that's another layer. It's that, you know, oh, when you're self-compassionate, that's really selfish or that's kind of, you know, having some sort of ego when it's actually the opposite, right? right, right. Um, it's just showing kindness, and it has a completely different tone to it. Um, but it, it, that's, I think you speak to another reason why people kind of shy away from it. Like, no, 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 it's about being kind to others, not, not towards me. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, when, I think one of the points that Kristen Neff was making was when, when you feel self-esteem, you, you, you feel, um, I don't know if I'm going to get this right, but you're good with yourself. I think you were addressing it before mm -hmm. a little bit. You're, you're good with yourself. I'm, a, I'm good. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I, 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 it's like the sidestepping almost of emotions. Mm. Um, Got and and yes. self-compassion sort of brings you into a more of a gentle Got sense it. of self. So kind of the distinguished, like when someone says, how are you? And you're like, I'm fine. Yeah. When really you're like, actually, I'm really I'm angry. Dying I'm, <laughs> exactly. I'm dying inside. Exactly. I'm dying inside. I'm going through a really tough time. Nobody ever says that. Nobody wants to hear no. it, right? No. Another reason That's why it. people don't right. want to, right? right? right. We, yeah. don't, we don't want to hear it. We don't want to feel it. You know, all those things. But when we do feel it right. and we let it go through us, it goes through faster than when we just keep ignoring it. Right, right, right. And that's what I try to help my, my clients with. Because it doesn't matter if it's, you know, an unpleasant emotion, if it's a mistake, um, mm -hmm. if it's an addiction, if, you know, if it's a way that you failed in some way, you know, all these mm -hmm. things, are, if we can just live through it and feel it and pass through it and forgive ourselves and move on, it's much easier. It actually does reduce suffering in the long run. Yeah, no, it totally does. Um, but you, you brought up addiction. Let's talk a little bit about addiction and, mm -hmm. and how self-compassion can help in, in that process mm -hmm. in putting down whatever you're addicted to, whether it's, it's the opioid um, crisis that's gripping um, America and gripping Gloucester, for that matter. Mm. Um, alcohol, it could be eating. It could be being too busy, right? Yes. But um, So 
how does self-compassion help change that? Um, I, I don't want to say habit when mm. it comes to some of these addictive mm. behaviors because it's stronger than that sometimes. But um, how, do you, how does that help shift yeah. into a place of, of health? I think in more than one way, and the, the two ways that I'm thinking about is, is number one, if you're actually processing kind of what you're feeling rather than numbing it with something else, then, then you're going to have more resilience and be able to move things more and not need the substance to, to handle it. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a little bit of strengthening that way. Um, if the other thing is, you know, as we all know with any kind of addiction cycle, there's guilt. So there's this whole guilt and shame that goes with it, which feeds it, because then you feel guilty and shameful. So then, you know, you say, all right, I'm just going to take the drug, drink, you know, because now now you're feeding that. And Mm -hmm. then you feel guilty that you took the drug and you drank and, you you know, so it's just a cycle. Mm -hmm. Whereas with compassion, you would identify some of the things that are just human about you. You forgive yourself and, and you'd separate yourself from the addiction rather than I am you know, you completely consumed with it and that defines me and I identify with that and I'm useless because I'm just that. You can separate it a little bit and say, okay, I have a behavior that's not effective, it's destructive and I, and I need to change that, but it doesn't define me. Does that make sense? Oh, I'm yeah. Over identify with it. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So um, it, it kind of, it, it, it disrupts. The, the cycle, really, mm-hmm. self-compassion can disrupt the addictive cycle mm-hmm. slowly. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's not overnight. You don't like wake up and say, I'm going to be self-compassionate yeah. today, and then tomorrow I'm going to stop X. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, and it takes so much practice. Because if you think how used to it we are, whether it's a voice in our head from someone else being critical, or it's our own voice, or it's our own story, I mean, that's years of living underneath that narrative and so to change it it's not going to happen <laughs> overnight I wish it could but you know the voices are still going to be there <laughs> saying it but hopefully through practice it, it'll get less and less yeah. and the charge will be less yeah. of when you're thinking about it and you can identify it that there's that mindfulness and that awareness oh that's that story and so then you're no longer living it right. and kind of autopilot you're like oh that's when I think that I'm not good enough but and it's not true. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so it's reminding ourselves that some of the things that we say simply are not true. Absolutely. So, so you talked about practice. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's talk a little bit about um, what are some things that um, our viewers can do to, to make that shift. Like what can they practice on a daily basis or mm-hmm. you know, at what intervals? So Definitely. So, you know, just again, I know I... I speak of it a lot because I use it a lot and that's mindfulness so just starting there if you if you can use journaling or a trusted friend or a trusted professional to kind of say some of the thoughts a lot of times just saying them and putting them out can just take away some of the energy and help you be aware of some of these inner critic Mm storylines and things like that so give examples of some of the um storylines that we say so that people can hear you know, mm-hmm. sometimes I don't think, um, I know when I, I was going through a process of trying to recognize what I was thinking, I, I couldn't really hear myself saying them. If Does that make sense? Absolutely. And I'm glad you said that because we do it so it's subconsciously yeah. and so automatically that we don't notice until we pay attention. Mm-hmm. In fact, that's another example of why people want to shy away because when they first do it, they can't believe all the things they're hearing. Common ones are... Uh, they can be situational, you know, after you have a conversation with someone, you, you know, why did I say that? That was so stupid. I can't believe I said that. You know, mm-hmm. that's a very common one, believe it or not. And people get so upset, like, uh, and suddenly you're anxious and even depressed because of, you know, something you said that was fine. Right. Um, I know. Even I've, if it wasn't fine, what is it? What are you going to do? What are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? Which adds a whole other thing. Right. And how does it, how does that help it? Yeah, exactly. Right. If we're beating yourself up over it, it's in the past. You did the best you could, right? right. Those are all encouraging, compassionate thoughts to counteract it. Right. Um, the I am not enough one. I don't think people, it, it may not present itself as that, but 
Um, some of these people that feel like they have to go above and beyond for things or just always feel like they fall short. That's, that's, that's somewhere that's a storyline or a voice. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it can be, you know, other things that are really specific. You know, I'm stupid. I, you know, just these very negative um, uh, interpretations. And, and it can be after an experience, you know, like a precipitating event. It can be uh, just uh, some sort of opinion that they have of themselves. It can be because they're feeling, for example, if someone's feeling very anxious and they're having really intense feelings, sometimes they'll judge themselves for that. Um, you know, why am, I, why am I so scared? Why, you know, voices or stories like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so aside from meditating, mm-hmm. how, how does someone become mindful? Or mindfulness. So like I said, I think journaling is a big one. Talking it with, out with people. Um, it, just becoming an observer. And there's where that curiosity comes in. Being able to step back and kind of take a closer look. Why am I feeling these intense emotions? And a lot of times they're followed or be, or started with thoughts. Mm-hmm. And so just taking a moment to kind of figure out what that is. Mm-hmm. Okay, so mindfulness. Mm-hmm. What's another practice that um, folks can use? So another thing is, um, I think, self-soothing. Um, any kind of self-soothing ritual that people can do. And that can be anything from letter writing, you know, writing writing a letter to yourself as a friend. Mm-hmm. Um, I know this is where people don't don't shut it off. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably where people are like, oh geez. Um, but you can you can we, you know we do it for friends. Why not shift that energy on ourselves when we're going through a tough time? So writing a letter to yourself. Another thing is gestures. Kristen Neff is really big about that. She talks about the same gestures that we would give to a friend. Why aren't we giving that to ourselves? Like mm-hmm. touching your hand or um, you know touching your chest. Just something that. People don't even have to know you're doing, um, or even in the confines of your own home. You know, giving yourself a hug. I mean, you think about how powerful touch is. I mean, we could talk about all the science that's related to the power of touch, right? Right. right. And what it does to people, what it, what um, it releases in your brain. Uh, you know, in terms of connection and bonding, and why not do that to ourselves when we're feeling overwhelmed with you know difficult emotions. Mm-hmm. So some of those self-soothing things. Self-soothing. So now we have mindfulness, mm-hmm. self-soothing. Mm-hmm. One more, one more practice that people can take away. Well, I know uh, there's one that I could even do if you want. Um, sure. It's um, I don't know if you've heard it. The Pema Chodron's Tonglen. Um, it's it's kind of a meditation practice. Okay. What what is that? So basically, Tonglen means um, to take in and to give give back Mm -hmm. and I'll describe it and then if you want I can guide you in it okay um so basically the idea is that if we can be present with our own suffering and acknowledge it and then replace it with what we want to replace it with uh and practice that for ourselves as well as other people going through difficult times it, it helps us move through it Okay. Reducing the suffering, and it helps us become more compassionate for ourselves as well as compassionate for others. Mm-hmm. So I'll describe it, and then I can uh, lead you in it. So just describing it a little bit more, basically, if we take the example of an inner critic. So if someone is acknowledging that they're really hard on themselves about something, taking a moment, you know, you can uh, close your eyes or whatever you want, and just kind of breathing in that feeling of being harsh on yourself, And then exhaling what you would wish to replace it with. So usually it's peace, Mm -hmm. happiness, kindness, you know, just kind of letting go of that, that harshness for that example, right? And then from there, you know, you do it with yourself first, and then you do it for others. So we all know right now, if we could take a poll, how many people are being critical to themselves and harsh on themselves in this moment? Can you imagine? All over the world. A lot of people, yeah. All over the world. So you take in a breath for them, and you take in that feeling of just being harsh and critical, and then exhaling peace and kindness and comfort, whatever comes to you for everyone else. I've done this in a group, and it's really powerful. Uh, Just being able to 
to get outside of yourself for other people actually feeds the self-compassion as well because it just normalizes it, mm -hmm. lets you know everybody kind of feels it. Um, another thing that you can do is thinking think of someone like a friend or a family member that's specifically going through that or something else, you know. So, but again, staying on the inner critic, you know, someone that you know is really harsh on themselves, yeah, and doing that. So, do you want me to practice it real quick? Do we have time to um, do it? Or I think we're running out of time. Okay. So, but what I'll do is I'll put up uh, a practice on the website. So I'll give the um, listeners the website to appreciate Perfect. recovery and they can go online and they can try the practice at home. That's perfect. Right. Yes, exactly. And um, um, so, so thank you so much for, for joining me today and, and being my first guest. I know, I feel so and, honored. Um, it's so exciting. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to this moving forward. Mm -hmm. And um, um, next month, we're actually going to be talking about curiosity. I don't have a guest yet. Okay. But that's going to be the topic. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm looking forward to that. So um, I want to thank you also for joining us today. And um, I wanted to let you know that you can learn more about Jennifer at her website, which is um, www.jenniferhcarry.com. So don't forget the H between Jennifer and Carrie. Because <laughs> you'll go to a different website if you do. JenniferCarry.com was taken. Yes, it was. It was a conversation we had prior we won't to the. Talk about that. Go there. I have to have okay. compassion for that. <laughs> um, and you can check us out online, appreciativerecovery.org. And um, what I'll have up there is I'll have some um, list of some books. So Kristen Neff's book will be up there. Um, some of Brene Brown's books will be up there. We didn't get a chance to talk about Brene Brown, but we love her as well. And um, uh, I'll have monthly blogs on the topics that we address in the show, so that'll be up there as well. Uh, sign up for an email. So I'll send you the link to the show in the email. I'll send you the blog, and you can just get it all in one place. Um, so again, thank you for joining us, and um, I look forward to seeing you again next month. Thank you.